Hello, and just to let everybody know that today we have interpretation in English, French, and Spanish. So in order to understand the discussions, we will have people speaking in all three languages. So please do go to that bottom panel of your screens uh, and go to the interpretation icon, which you can see there represented, and select the language that you would like to listen to. Great. And then it is my pleasure to pass over to Kamal Kumarai from the IPBES ILK Task Force and the Society for Wetland Biodiversity Conservation, Nepal. Kamal, please. Bashumanda Wakamada Safaraza Safarani Sayapoko Sayasungo. Today we are having a very important uh, the workshop uh, with from uh, brother and sisters uh, IPLC from group. I'm praying for uh, the mother and mother earth and mother nature and spirit that left us the um, the ancestor. We're discussing for the value about the ILK system in the biodiversity and EPS process. So we need to your uh, energy and spirit for success uh, our events. And thank you very much. And thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Thank you so much, Kamal, for starting us off with that prayer. And now it's my pleasure to pass over to Hindu, who is uh, from Chad and is a member of the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Hindu, the floor is yours. Thank you, Peter. I just, uh, um, I'm going to turn on my camera in a second. Hi, are you all seeing me? Yes, we can see you. Okay, thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope that you all doing well and now uh, uh, you are uh, meditating with my brother here who gave us the opening statement. So it's really a pleasure for me to welcome you all to this site, even on indigenous and local knowledge in biodiversity assessment on behalf of the UN Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues. Since a couple of years, we see that there is more and more interest for indigenous people's traditional knowledge. And this is a very good news, of course, uh, because it's happening in different fora that we are seeing how indigenous people's role are recognized and are important for all of us. But uh, interest is not enough because this knowledge could disappear in the coming decade. And as indigenous people so are in front line on climate change of biodiversity loss, so we need to focus on how we can protect more those knowledge. So indigenous people's traditional knowledge play already a critical role to implement the Paris Agreement and a solution for biodiversity and ecosystem restoration and protections and on, on the context of the upcoming COP15 and the negotiation for the post 2020 global biodiversity framework. Uh, by protecting all the 80% of the world's biodiversities, we all know that indigenous peoples are accumulated an encyclopedia of knowledge that are very needed for climate mitigation, adaptation, and also for the restoration of the rest of our ecosystem. But also we know that 
if they are well placed to protect their environment. So as indigenous peoples, we are also often excluded to the decision making and of course to the international decision making tables. So my hope that today is to find concrete solutions that empower indigenous peoples to protect better their knowledge and to get access to the decision making process because it is not time of negotiation anymore. It is time of taking the decision together. And it is also the time of implementation on the ground because so, so far I'm so happy that the last couple of months I realized a participatory mapping at the communities that put together women use all the different peoples from the communities from the local and indigenous peoples and indigenous peoples share their knowledge and uh, that is really central for all of us it is like where you are in the computer and then you can see the central disk it is a wikipedia of indigenous peoples to see all the different knowledge that uh, often oral and transmitted also orally. And we do not have just to rely to a drive or to a book, but we have our brands and our grandmother and grandfather. So how we can keep our grandmothers and grandfathers to transfer those knowledge because they are best also in a different ecosystem. So to take advantage of that, I think indigenous people's solutions, we need a site even like this one, today we are held in here. And uh, not only like presentation to presentation, but to develop a tools, a solutions that we can all share together. And now uh, we also know that the Paris agree, I know the Paris COP26 in Glasgow recall it a commitment of 1.7 billion to give and access to indigenous peoples. So how we can use that to enhance the collaboration between science, government, companies, indigenous peoples, local authorities in this Irjan manner. So this event therefore come at the, an important moment for reflection so that we can further enhance our effort for peoples and planet and build the better connection with the nature based on the traditional knowledge of indigenous knowledge. So I would like to thank the organizer, the IPBS, the best net, and then the network of the center of distinctions of indigenous and local knowledge. And also to thanks all you participants that have joined us today. So I would like also to thank the network done by IPBS for collaboration with indigenous and local knowledge, especially as well since with the global assessment and the new assessment. And I want to give a special acknowledgement to indigenous peoples working group this is the task force on indigenous and local knowledge in the assessment and the dialogue workshop as well as the many author who have worked on i uh, on uh, ilk and thank you so much peter for making that happen i also wanted to note that the best net program is increasing its focus on indigenous and local knowledge the dialogue they are organized between the iplc government and scientists have the potential to influence biodiversity policy making and the national level ecosystem assessment they are helping to coordinate and they have also all this potential to engage with the uh, LRK and uh, all the local and national level. It is essential that we, we need more real work at the local level and less speeches at all the US and all the other uh, organizations. So I also wanted to highlight the importance work of the Central of Distinctions on indigenous and local knowledge in supporting research and advocacy around indigenous and local knowledge. They are now expanding their membership to further enhance their impact and activities across the world. And thank you for enhancing that. Put indigenous people in the centers that can help all our work to move forward. So I would like to wish to all of you a very fruitful discussions today and really looking forward to have your outcome. And of course, at the permanent forum, we will be looking also for all the recommendations we can implement together. Thank you so much and over to you, Peter.
Thank you so much for those opening words, Hindu, and we really appreciate you uh, speaking for the forum and uh, joining us today to open the side event in such uh, an important, special way. So thank you very much. I now have the pleasure of passing the floor to Ana Maria Hernandez, the chair of IFBES, who will welcome us. Thank you very much. Um... Peter and well, I I want to join my voice um, uh, to Hindu in thanking all of you uh, for being here. Especially, I want to uh, thank BestNet and the Centers of Extinction and Indigenous and Local Knowledge for um, working, uh, networking with uh, with us. Um, and it is fantastic to see today the speakers, the panelists, and all the participants. And I have been um, looking at the chat that uh, we are having people from all around uh, the world and uh, different uh, um, uh, sources of knowledge. So it's fantastic uh, to, to um, see the richness that uh, is here today um, with us. So I'm going to switch to Spanish if you want to uh, click in your button on translation. Um, y quisiera en este momento en español. I also wanted to highlight how important indigenous knowledge and local knowledge is to understand and manage biodiversity. I uh, thank all organizations that are here today. I have seen the work that they have done firsthand and they have all uh, worked with extremely valuable information and knowledge and they have played a key role in this work. They are working to include indigenous and local knowledge at different levels uh, in different evaluations done by the uh, platform. And this is the information, of course, that is given to policy makers. However, there is still a great deal of work to be done. I'm so pleased to see in the chat that organizations are asking how they can get involved in this process. We hope that this event will be uh, precisely a um, way for us to attract more people, more communities, and more knowledge so that we can include all of that in the processes of IPES. I also want to highlight the fact that we have seen a great deal of work, uh, work that you have done uh, within your different uh, networks uh, to establish links with community research. Because this is a work that needs to be comprehensive. It needs to involve knowledge holders as well as people who are researching knowledge and people who are researching biodiversity. We've seen how members of indigenous and local communities are doing their own research using their own methodologies and sharing those methodologies with the Western research methodology around biodiversity and this really increases the uh, richness of the knowledge that we have and the solutions that we can come to. As you know, knowledge does not belong to the few. There isn't a single way to build knowledge. It is uh, cross, uh, dis it's multidisciplinary. And so we need to have a, a constant and respectful dialogue with knowledge holders uh, within this uh, system of knowledge. So thank you very much for being a part of the uh, collective construction of this mission, this mission that brings all of us together. 
the idea is to provide the best information tools so that policymakers can uh, come up with the right approaches for the planet, for people, and of course, for the future of coming uh, generations. So thank you very much, everyone, and welcome once again. Ahora, entonces, vamos a, eh, so now we are going to look at the aims of today's meeting. As you can see, we have four aims, which we hope to reach. The first is to explore how IPLCs are participating in biodiversity assessments at different scales. So we have uh, country level cases, we have uh, sub-regional and uh, international uh, global cases. So how uh, have these communities gotten involved? And this, we also want to explore benefits to IPLCs of participation. So if there are these benefits, then how can we strengthen the participation of knowledge holders coming from uh, indigenous uh, communities and local communities? And then, of course, uh, how to explore ways of enhancing participation by IPLCs. And then, really, the the cherry on top is uh, discussing links with policymaking and community-based research. So I think that with that, we're going to be able to have a very fruitful discussion. And in order to uh, reach, uh, achieve the, the aims that we've set. We've got this agenda for the day. So first of all, we will have some presentations from uh, IPES, BESNET, and the Centers of Distinction on Indigenous and Local Knowledge. Then we will have an informal panel discussion uh, because we hope uh, for everyone to be able to participate openly and uh, comfortably in a way that uh, generates um, trust uh, amongst all of us. Then we will have a Q&A session and then we will look at how we can really engage uh, people in the processes and that will be the closing of the event. So thank you to everyone. Once again, I'm going to give the floor back to Peter now to uh, continue with uh, the agenda. Great, thank you so much, Anna Maria. Uh, so now we've had our opening and our welcome and our aims and we know the agenda for the for the session. Uh, we were gonna do a quick note on engagement. I think we all know most of these things by now. Uh, for the panelists, please self mute when not making an intervention to reduce background noise. We're asking everybody to please be fairly brief in their interventions so that everybody has a chance to speak. If you would like to pose a comment or a question, please do use the chat function or the question and answer function, whichever you feel uh, feel most comfortable with. And as Anna Maria said, it's great that people are writing in the chat. Uh, so if you want to write uh, who you are, what your organization does and your contact details, then please do. And then we can save all of those after the session. So please do keep writing there. Uh, and also to let you know, we'll be recording the meeting. Uh, the plan is that only the formal presentations and the panelist interventions will be made available afterwards. And if there's anything else we plan to make available, then we will contact the people involved to make sure that's okay. And that's all part of the uh, free prior and informed consent process that we follow. So with that, it's my pleasure to pass the floor to Viviana Figuera from Argentina. She's a member of the IPBES ILK Task Force and the Indigenous Women Network for Biodiversity. And she's going to explain about IPBES's work with Indigenous and local knowledge. Viviana, the floor is yours. 
Eh, thanks, Peter. Eh, buenos días, buenas tardes, buenas noches, hermanos y, y hermanas. Good um, morning, afternoon, and evening, brothers and sisters. Thanks for this opportunity. Peter, you're going to help me out with sharing your screen, or am I the one in charge? Anyway, I will move on. Uh, as you all know, I've seen lots of familiar faces in this session. The Intergovernmental Platform on Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services, so-called IPES, was established by member states in 2012, and now it is composed of 139 member countries. The overall objective of IPES is to strengthen the science policy interface for the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity, long-term human well-being and sustainable development. Next one, please. The new IPES work program from 2019 to 2030 has five main objectives. The main objective is enhancing or strengthening knowledge foundations, specifically the one that relates to enhancing work with indigenous and local knowledge. Next one, please. Thus, it is important to know that IPES recognizes the importance of indigenous and local knowledge to the conservation and sustainable use of ecosystems. Therefore, it works with the different results and assessments. The IPES also has a conceptual framework where explicitly considers multiple knowledge systems and types of values. It also has the indigenous and local knowledge, ILQ task force, and a specific technical support unit, which is uh, in Paris. Next one. As I previously mentioned, it recognizes the work with indigenous and local knowledge and the approach to recognizing and working with this knowledge was approved in 2017 within its fifth plenary meeting. IBER has also developed a methodology to enhance the participation by IPLCs and all the different assessment and activities. This is a, a process, an ongoing process. We are learning through different assessment and other activities to improve the mechanism. It is not a close, end, but it's open and Keep on changing. Next one, please. Here we have a list of completed assessments. Indigenous peoples around the world have contributed to these different assessments. Uh, one related to pollinators. Four regional assessment took place as well in the assessment on land degradation and restoration, and probably the most important, which is the global assessment on biodiversity, which took place in 2019. It is so important for indigenous people and local communities because there are lots of key messages that are relevant to IPLCs. And we play an important role throughout all assessment, but especially in this global assessment. Next one. Probably to briefly share with you some of the main important results from the global assessment. One of the key messages states that at least a quarter of the global land area 
is traditionally own, manage, and use or occupied by indigenous. I think, uh, sorry, can we go to the next one, please? We just went back. Oh, thanks. And another key message highlights the recognition of knowledge, practices, and the importance of the inclusion and participation in environmental governance. So the policies could participate throughout all these processes. And other key message refers to the positive contributions of IPLCs to sustainability and the importance of the national recognition of land tenure, access uh, to resources and the importance of the free prior and informed concern application and also the importance of enhancing collaboration, fair and equitable sharing of benefits uh, arising from the use of those traditional knowledges. So these are key messages within the global assessment that we as IPLCs can use so that uh, these assessments also have a local impact. It, we also have ongoing assessment, one related to multiple values of nature. Within this specific assessment, we see the um, IPLC's values and understanding of nature. This assessment will uh, finish pretty soon. And after that, there will be a post-assessment work Another assessment that will end soon is the one related to sustainable use of wild species, which includes how IPLCs use, managers, and govern resources, which is a very important work. We have been taking part of several meetings to finalize this assessment and another assessment that will still ongoing is invasive alien species assessment, which includes how IPLCs uh, perceive experience in managing invasive species and their impacts, which is also important because IPLCs have a deep knowledge on different species and we easily identify when we have any type of new or exotic of invasive species. Next one, please, Peter. Thank you. Um, new assessments. The nexus of biodiversity, water, food, and health is a new assessment. We're just by emphasizing the importance of the interlinkages as well as climate change and probably this specific assessment will focus on how the IPLCs see and understand these interlinkages. Another assessment is related to uh, transformative change. How to create a societal change as a whole and how IPLCs see that change. And what can IPLCs teach the rest of the world on uh, their own way and ways of living. IPLCs uh, have a the approach of living in accordance with nature and that could definitely shows very positive effects to transformative change and, and an assessment that will start next year, business and biodiversity and how we understand and measure business impacts. So these are the new assessments, those uh, that are already have already started, but those that will start pretty soon. But uh, one of the main questions that we were sharing in the chat was how IPLCs can participate in ITBES. First of all, to become part of the ILQ task force, Within this task force, 
we are overseeing and developing methods and working together with other task forces and then we'll work on the assessment and do the follow-up of the different activities. There will be a call for nominations in 2023 so that you can apply to be a member as a IPLC representative. You can also um, apply to be an author of the assessment. It's part of the outer groups for assessment. So there's a call for nominations for indigenous and local community representatives and governments um, are asked to uh, be part of the author groups for assessments. At this point, it is closed for the new assessment. There will be more to come. There will be more calls and opportunities for you to participate so you can become authors of the different assessments. Next one. Ah, oh, okay, uh, there it was, sorry. Contributing authors. You can also become authors that contribute with parts or portions of the text. It, maybe you can just uh, share uh, your experience and contribute with examples or data. This could be a way of contributing others. If you are interested in contributing to some of the assessments that are still ongoing, you can get in touch with Peter. He is a technical support. He's part of the technical support unit, and he'll be more than happy to get your contribution. And you can also submit your materials once an online call for contribution is made on a specific studies on traditional knowledge. You can send and submit those materials. There will be a call uh, in the second half of 2022. Documents that have been published or articles that were published in specific scientific uh, magazines, or it could also be videos, community reports, artworks, etc. Basically, it, all these process and work on of the tax for we have included free prior and informed consent is the key to our work whenever we're getting material of course uh, those have to get the free prior and informed consent of the communities because this reflects the impact of communities and their perspectives and viewpoints and and it is important to know that they are they are willing to share that specific piece of information. Next one, please. Yeah. There are also dialogue workshops uh, that bring together IPLCs and authors of the, you work on the scoping in the frame, on um, framing of, the specific assessment where specific key ILQ questions are answered, work on the first uh, review of a first draft, and then a second review take place. I would lead for to the creation of the summary for policymakers. So there are def different stages for a assessment preparation if you like to take part of the, uh, these specific workshops, you can contact the ILK technical support unit as well. Next one. Uh, uh, these are the different emails and websites uh, where you can review the ILQ work 
And based on my experience, I have been working uh, together with IPES many years already. I may mention that authors and assessments contain relevant information and current issues we are all experiencing and especially related to biodiversity and those reports uh, are open to us and they're open for IPLC's contributions and those are reflection and potential actions that uh, IPLCs and countries may take and that also are part of the discussions of the convention. Uh, discussions that can also be very important tools, uh, the policy making process at a local level. Thank you for your um, paying attention to this presentation. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much for Viviana for giving us that presentation on IPBES and its work with indigenous and local knowledge. It's great to see so many questions coming in the chat and the questions and answers. We have a whole panel who are sitting behind the scenes here who are going to start answering those questions for you in the chat and the questions and answers. So we're really encouraging them all to do that. And please do keep those questions and comments coming. So thank you very much. And now it's my pleasure to pass over to Joseph Karan who works with me here at UNESCO in the BestNet ILK support unit. And he's going to uh, talk to us about BestNet work with indigenous and local knowledge. Joseph, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Peter. And uh, let me confirm whether you can hear me. Yes, loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, it's a, a great honor to participate in this event and to have a chance to share the, the best net experience in working with indigenous peoples and local communities, uh, as well as their, their knowledge. Uh, next slide, Peter. Um, at uh, Biodiversity and Ecosystem Services Network, BestNet, we recognize the value of indigenous and local knowledge in biodiversity conservation. And we aspire to facilitate the engagement of indigenous peoples and local communities in biodiversity decision-making process. Uh, we do this by promoting dialogues uh, within, between, and also among science, policy, and practice sectors to build knowledge capacity and also collaborative action. Our primary RK work is to support the IPES uh, capacity building roading plan, uh, particularly strategy 2B by facilitating the consideration of RK by enhancing the capacity for country partners to use RK in biodiversity assessment, as well as in biodiversity decision making processes. Uh, we also support, uh, support strategy three by strengthening national and regional capacities for conducting uh, subglobal and as well as national biodiversity and ecosystem assessment using RK and I'll elaborate this further. Next slide, Peter. Uh, two of the base net main initiatives are trialogues and national ecosystem assessment. In the implementation of this, uh, particularly these two in initiatives, we undertake participatory, collaborative, and country-led approach to increase the ownership as well as the sustainability of this initiative. Our BestNet uh, project is co-implemented by three UN agencies. Um, BestNet is led by UNDP uh, that uh, that also did the work on the trialogue and stakeholder engagement component. UNEP WCMC also host the National Ecosystem Assessment Initiative and lead the technical support on national ecosystem assessment component. Here at UNESCO, we, we support and lead the BestNet RK support unit and indigenous and local knowledge is mainstream in all the work plans of the BestNet. Next uh, slide, Peter. Uh, so here are some of our beneficiary countries. Uh, currently, we are working with uh, 15 countries across across the globe. I'm not going to go into the detail of each country, but uh, in summary, four of these countries uh, highlighted in blue 
uh, Light Blue have already completed their national uh, national ecosystem assessment, and some of them have already representative here. And uh, some uh, other seven countries are at a different stages of national ecosystem assessment. And four other countries highlighted in dark blue are being provided with catalytic support for the uptake of the IBES assessment on our degradation and restoration, uh, as well as assessment on pollinators, pollination and food uh, production. Next slide, Peter. So I, I think the main question is how can indigenous and local, uh, how is indigenous and local community mainstream first uh, in one of the wa work program that you're working with, which is the trial process. Uh, a business trialogue is a multi-stakeholder engagement platform that bring together three set of stakeholders and knowledge holders, that is the policy makers, practitioners and scientists, including uh, indigenous uh, RK holders for a participatory and constructive dialogue on biodiversity and ecosystem services issues, as well as uh, to, you know, to come up with um, uh, an action and to, to co implement together. So BizNet has so far facilitated four trialogues in five sub-regions, and the fifth uh, trialogue is happening later this year. Uh, in each regional trialogue, one country was selected and provided with catalytic fund to implement actions that were identified during the trialogue discussion. Uh, one of that country is in Kenya, and I will elaborate how they have engaged uh, indigenous and local communities in their process. Next slide, Peter. So uh, uh, Kenya is one of the trial country, uh, what we call post-trial countries that is being uh, supported for the uptake of the IBES assessment on pollinators and that degradation. Three other countries are also going through the same process. So after attending the Agrophone Africa Regional Trialogue in 2019, Kenya was supported to establish National Trialogue Secretariat. And uh, to ensure that the indigenous and local communities are involved in the decision making process, uh, one indigenous, uh, indigenous and local community, uh, indigenous and local knowledge holder from Ogek community that have very patent knowledge on pollinators, particularly, was nominated to be part of the sec secretariat, as well as one of the archive researcher uh, working uh, at National Museums of Kenya. So this has ensured that RK, uh, as well as indigenous and local knowledge, local communities issues are incorporated from uh, in, in co-designing the project as well as implementation of the uh, of the of the design project. For instance, the team plan to engage in OGEC indigenous community and other communities in raising awareness on pollinators conservation as well as developing pollinator uh, uh, a pilot. Uh, a pilot, uh, a pilot on uh, as a one of the conservation model for the pollinators, as well as mapping of um, uh, of that degradation. Also, they are keen in engaging youth and also other local communities, particularly in the conservation of critically endangered eastern bongo. And next slide, Peter. Uh, moving to the other main work stream. Uh, and also, we, we support the National Ecosystem Assessment, and uh, we are providing RK capacity building support to seven countries that are conducting National Ecosystem Assessment under the umbrella of uh, NEA initiative that is hosted by UNEP WCMC. Our work range from providing in-country support, which include coaching, assessment others, and, and the team to work with the Thank you, thank you, Simone, uh, which include uh, coaching, um, assessment, others, and team uh, to work, uh, you know, to work with RK. We also have developed uh, material guides that are available uh, for in the public, and this can be uh, assessed through the NDA initiative website, and they articulate how RK can be engaged in the NDA or the National Ecosystem Assessment process. We also providing we also been providing training workshop and webinars on R and on RK and here are some of the recent webinars that we are doing but these are mainly tailored for our, uh, our target countries. Next slide, Peter. 
So uh, in terms also of the national ecosystem assessment, we're also supporting countries to also mobilize indigenous uh, and local knowledge beyond what is available in the literature review. Uh, and uh, for instance, uh, what this uh, in the mobilization, this, this is mainly guided by the IPES RK methods and the approach. So we, we borrow a lot from there. For example, we are helping in organizing RK dialogue workshop in different countries. And one example here is, for example, in December last year, we supported three RK framing workshops in Madawi. And this uh, framing workshop helped to identify pat patent uh, RK issues and questions that should be addressed by the assessment. And similar dialogue are being plan in the Dominican Republic as well as in, in, in the island this year. Uh, we are also supporting uh, ground, RK ground research. Uh, and for, this, uh, for, for instance, there is ongoing uh, community participatory mapping research in Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, which, uh, which has been very instrumental in their national ecosystem assessment process. Uh, we also supporting country team uh, and assessment others on how to effective, effectively weave, uh, weave RK into the assessment report as well as summary for policymakers. And for instance, uh, Colombia, although this was without UNESCO support, they wrote a dedicated chapter on indigenous and local knowledge. And one of their key findings from the assessment uh, is that RK uh, is that most preserved forest areas coincide with the territories of indigenous peoples and other ethnic uh, groups. And they highlight that there's a need to further engage uh, indigenous peoples and local communities as one, one of the critical actors in the conservation of biodiversity and ecosystem services. Next slide, Peter. Uh, we are also raising awareness on, on value as well as contribution of indigenous and local communities through our respective website, uh, as, well, as well as social media platform. And you can see some of our articles uh, and media highlight, uh, social media highlight here. And uh, we are constantly welcoming contribution on indigenous and local knowledge, particularly from RK holders, uh, in case you are interested in contributing uh, news articles, for instance, please get in touch with me and uh, my colleague Alexa Alexandra will also update on how you can reach us on that. And next slide, Peter. Uh, we also, uh, because we welcome collaboration and partner, uh, partnership, we welcome also to join uh, BestNet and uh, you can read more on BestNet through BestNet website as, as well as NDA through the NDA initiative website. Uh, you can also join uh, business as individual partner or as, a, as one of the experts at a different theme of the business, or you can organ, uh, join business as a partner organization. And here we are welcoming uh, particularly indigenous and local communities organization and partners to join us as, part of, uh, as, partner, as partner organization. And please reach out to me to understand some of the benefits uh, of joining business as partner uh, as one of the partner. Uh, we, we also issue a BestNet monthly news, newsletter which can be accessed through our website. And we also welcoming contribution uh, on RK uh, through what we call uh, Expert Corner. And we are happy to elaborate further on this. Uh, uh, on this and feel free to also uh, follow us on our social media platforms. Next slide, Peter. Um, I'm also pleased to inform you that in the panel, I'll also be joined by my best net colleagues. Um, that is Yuko Kurauchi, who is the best net coordinator from UNDP BestNet, and also uh, Shena Garcia from UNEP WCMC National uh, ecosystem assessment initiative and also part of the best net and we are looking forward to answering any question that you may have. Uh, last, last slide, Peter. And lastly, I would like to acknowledge the general support of the International uh, Climate Initiative, ICI, of the Federal Ministry of the Environment, Nature, Conservation and Nuclear Safety of the Federal Republic of Germany and Sweet Bio of Stockholm Resilience Center in Sweden for supporting the business initiative. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Joseph, for giving us that uh, description of the fascinating work of Bessonet with indigenous and local knowledge. And I think we can start to see how the work of IPBES at the global level, and then Bessonet working more at the regional and country level starts to form these connections throughout the system at different levels. Now it is my pleasure to give the floor to Joji Carino, who is the convener of the network of the Centers of Distinction on Indigenous and Local Knowledge. Uh, and she's going to explain to us about the work of the Centers of Distinction and how that fits into this, uh, this picture of working on Indigenous and Local Knowledge on biodiversity. Joji, the floor is yours. Um. Thanks very much, Peter. And it's great that we're having this um, event. Um, so greetings, uh, everyone. I'll be presenting some information about the network of um, centers of distinction on indigenous and local knowledge, and also some of our activities in engaging with the IPBES work program at local to global levels. I'd like to thank also that presentation on BestNet because I've been very much focused on the um, other work, the assessments, and now uh, that BestNet is also giving a lot of attention on the inclusion of ILK, I think that has opened up um, many avenues of uh, direct uh, participation. So uh, we're uh, composed of organizations and networks who have been uh, doing work on traditional knowledge in different uh, regions. So these are already existing organizations who have been engaging in UN processes, but now want to give a strong focus in their work on traditional knowledge. So obviously each center has its own distinct activities, but uh, by working together, we can strengthen each other but also identify areas where we can collaborate and give greater voice and uh, uh, make contributions. So um, because we're based in other all around the world, we have a strong focus on community-based monitoring and information systems, uh, contributing to a publication called Local Biodiversity Outlooks, uh, two editions so far. And I'm glad that uh, IPBES authors have acknowledged that these are useful uh, resources, as well as for the CBD accompanying Global Biodiversity Outlooks 4 and 5. Next uh, slide. So um, we have four areas of uh, collaboration uh, priorities. Obviously, the one we're discussing now is IPBES and uh, other knowledge platforms. This also exists nationally and in other processes. But for our own work, we support community participatory research and community monitoring, exchange programs to learn from each other, and uh, also strengthening indigenous knowledge transmission, both from elders to younger and younger to elders. And uh, we plan to have a global workshop to share our experiences uh, in the last quarter. Uh, because we're a network, uh, we try to decentralize uh, our work so each center can take a lead on the activities that are on hand and others who want to join in that work can join in. So in effect, each center is a, a node for a bigger uh, networks existing at the local, national, or regional level. Next slide. Um, this is where we are. Uh, as you can see, we are distributed in different parts of uh, the world, Asia, North America, Russia, um, Europe, um, Latin America, and the Caribbean, and the Pacific. Next slide. Um, these are the founding members of the network. I won't go through all of them, but uh, perhaps you can recognize some of the networks that are known to you. Um, in Asia, for example, the Asian Indigenous Peoples Pact and its uh, member countries are participating. In Latin America, SOTSIL and um, FIPSI. And in um, Africa, quite a few in Kenya and uh, also the Africa Biodiversity Network. Next slide. Um, we have been uh, working on uh, expanding the membership. So recently, in addition to the founding members, we have the Sami Council, Chirapak in Peru, 
Ngato Community Foundation, a community-based uh, center, and uh, a um, regional network formed in Asia called Indigenous Knowledge and Peoples of Asia, facilitated by AI AIPP. So it, we're in fact an open-ended network. Um, we try to operate in an open manner and report whenever platforms or um, events come up where we can uh, report. And um, we are now legally registered in the Philippines. Um, and uh, our global secretariat is hosted by our member partners for Indigenous Knowledge Philippines. And uh, echoing these uh, words from Joseph, we are thankful that uh, Sweet Bio is supporting uh, the network uh, 2021 to 2022, which has allowed us to do this uh, institutional strengthening, but also the direct priorities we identified. Next slide. Okay, so um, I'll just be brief on the work we've done with Eat Best. So we actually launched the network in uh, Eat Best 4 and uh, uh, announced this to the countries who then recognized uh, Eat Best that's the self-organized network of indigenous peoples and communities as a network uh, contributing to its work. So um, we've participated in a range of dialogue sessions uh, connected to different assessments. And um, we have been really supported and facilitated in this also by helping us to identify who are the relevant experts and holders to invite. Um, if best, is actually broader than the centers of distinction. These are all the participants from indigenous and local communities who participate at the IPBES plenary to make our statements on relevant agenda items. For example, when the approach paper was being discussed, we made a strong statement on this approach paper. And uh, the IPBES stakeholder day this year that will take place on July 2, we are members of a steering committee uh, that is planning for stakeholder day because of course the stakeholders are in charge of that particular uh, event. Next uh, slide. So, okay, um, these have already been highlighted in terms of the assessments that have been produced. There was good uh, participation in the pollination also as a follow-up uh, workshop that was held in Thailand. Uh, the Africa Regional Consultation and the Asia Pacific Regional Consultations that contributed to the global report, right? Um, yes, also the participatory mechanism, including discussions on how to help to operate this um, effectively. And uh, we also participate in side events like the one we're doing now, in the past uh, two years or earlier years, we've been uh, participating in side events of the UN Permanent Forum and um, making pro recommendations for the inclusion of IPBES in the work of the UN Permanent Forum. Uh, next slide. So for example, the UN Permanent Forum that came out in 2018, the forum welcomed the establishment of IPBES to assess the state of biodiversity. It supports the platform's approach uh, through the approach paper and throughout its work program. And uh, it invited IPBES to continue to inform the forum about its work. So next slide. So after 20, okay, uh, go back to the previous one. So after the um, IPBES assessment uh, was approved and disseminated in, starting 2019, of course, uh, it reported back to the UN Permanent Forum. And of course, um, this was warmly welcomed, that particular assessment, because it is already having big impact, for example, in the current CBD negotiations of the post-2020 GBF. But also, uh, I've been sharing the global assessment to groups in the Philippines, including universities, and um, well, one, the assessments themselves are very impressive, but also it really gives them um, good ideas 
about how indigenous and local knowledge can be used in country, in universities, and also in communities. So next slide. And um, yes, other activities that we have is that we have a newsletter of our network. Uh, we take it in turn to produce these newsletters. So it's been produced in the Philippines by PIKP and also in Panama. We're awaiting uh, newsletters being produced in Africa and also in the Pacific, right? Um, in coordination with uh, the IPBES work on nature's futures, uh, we worked with Sweet Bio and particularly the network in Africa, Africa Biodiversity Network, to hold a workshop on uh, ILK futures and in the, uh, how do we envision our own futures. So this is uh, related to the IPBES work, but also related to our own cultural exchange on how we address uh, futures. Um, okay. Um, we have, uh, we are working on a scoping and a concept note on looking at how, and this is uh, connected to scoping, what is the work already being done across the different regions on, uh, indigenous and local knowledge by identifying organizations, holders and experts and centers who are doing this work, hopefully to support also uh, further opening and expansion. And uh, just to highlight one um, activity, the Partners for Indigenous Knowledge Philippines produced a work called um, Recipes, uh, heritage recipes from the Cordillera region, working with uh, community organizations. And this got awarded the Philippine Heritage Award for educational resources for indigenous education. And because of the success of that first book, uh, we are able to support a second edition of heritage recipes. So I know that other centers are also doing uh, similar work. Um, next slide, I think this is my last. Okay, so um, thanks very much for listening. Uh, that was just to give an uh, overview of how uh, we as indigenous are participating in IPBES work. And hopefully my other colleagues will join us in the panel discussion also to highlight their work. If they can very briefly talk directly about their own um, contributions and how they have been also helped by uh, engaging with the IPBES work. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for that, Joji. And it's great to hear more about the work of the network of the Centers of Distinction on Indigenous and Local Knowledge, and especially how uh, you're planning to expand and increase your impact. And I think that's going to be really exciting in the future. So now we're a little behind uh, schedule, as always, uh, but the plan now is just to briefly, this, the aim of this slide is just to uh, emphasize that questions and answers are really welcome in the Q&A function and in the chat. Uh, so we just wanted to let you know who's here behind the scenes answering your questions. Uh, so there is uh, Simone Athede from the uh, Values Assessment, Mala Emery from the Sustainable Use Assessment, Maria Elena from the Values Assessment, Pam from the Global Assessment and uh, the Nexus Assessment. And then from BestNet, as Joseph said, we have Yuko and Shena. So feel free to please keep answer, asking your questions into the chat and the question and answers, and we'll all try to get to as many of those as possible. If we don't get to answer them all, we may follow up by email afterwards. So if you feel like your question hasn't been properly, uh, properly addressed by the end of the session, please just write in the chat, please could you write to me relating to my question, and we'll make sure we get to you, because I can see there's a lot of comments and questions coming, and we want to make sure we get to all of them. And next, the plan is to have a panel. 
uh, of uh, members of the Centers of Distinction on ILK and also other Indigenous peoples and local community members who have worked with us in different ways in IPBES. So uh, as I say, we're running a little behind time, so we'll get moving on that immediately. Uh, and you can also be posing questions to them in the chat and the question and answers as well. So first, it's my pleasure to give the floor to Edith Bastidas, who is from Colombia and is with the Network of Indigenous Women on Biodiversity. Edith, if you're able to uh, take the floor, that would be great. Hola, muy buenos días. Hello, good morning. Greetings, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you attending this event. First of all, thank you. This is a space that brings together different stakeholders like IPBES, the Permanent Forum, the IPLCs, organizations to talk about ILQ. What, what I have to say about this specific topic is that I have been coordinating a chapter of traditional knowledge here in Colombia. It is one of those first activities that include the specific chapter on indigenous knowledge. It was quite an interesting experience for me since uh, we had indigenous peoples, uh, knowledge holders that took part on a tree dialogue, tree dialogue. And there were lots of challenges within this exchange. The importance of knowledge and how to use knowledge by the decision makers. We still do not believe uh, that traditional knowledge is wholly recognized, even though we have seen the advances and the development and the importance of conservation and mitigation of climate change and the inputs provided by that knowledge to uh, add to these efforts. The idea is that all the scientific information that has been already identified through the assessments and with the methodology of IPES at the national and global level, be actually taken into account by those decision makers because we believe that this knowledge will be useful for decision making, but always with the focus of the prior free informed consent peoples have to ensure their direct participation and the provision of that specific free prior and informed consent. There are so many things that uh, we can share with you, but this is probably the main key message that I want to share with you. Indigenous knowledge has been recognized and it should be included within the agenda and the discussions at the decision-making level. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edith. And now it's my pleasure to pass the floor to Ramiro. Uh, he's from uh, Guatemala and he's co-chair of the International Indigenous Forum on Biodiversity, which works with the uh, Convention on Biological Diversity. Ramiro, please take the floor. Gracias. Thank you. Good morning, afternoon and evening to all of you. It, it is a, this is a very important event. I would like to talk, first of all, on the global level. The IFB have been part of different international dialogues to prepare assessments and reports on this topic. I think we have worked together in a collaborative manner, but there are still challenges to be faced indigenous people to conduct a, and be part of a, those reports to work at the intercultural dialogue that enhance knowledge. Indigenous science has to 
Movimiento a la in order and to link it with a, other different types of sciences. This is something that we have internally been discussing with the International Indigenous Forum and specifically the centers of distinction. So CIL, my organization has been part of uh, the work on centers of distinctions and we believe it is important to be part of the process. All different policies at international local level have to be put into practice and that's so important for us that we believe it is important to look at experiences. We have a local uh, center of distinction at the Chico community, which is actually opening a dialogue between decision makers in a country the academia and indigenous academia and the indigenous people on topics such as and risk management or vulnerability or early warning in Maya systems. Those have been a pretty uh, good exchanges to enhance this uh, knowledge between the different stakeholders that are part of the centers of extinction. I think that this is an important space that it is providing the main guidelines, the main good examples on how these dialogues should take place in same conditions by respecting the free prior informed consent and promoting the participation of indigenous peoples, women and youth alike, which is also an, another challenge to include the youth in this dialogue and to also include it to the post 2020 agenda. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ramiro. Uh, and now I will pass over to Yesenia Hernandez. Uh, she's from Mexico and she's the ILK focal point for IPBES there. Yesenia. Uh, thank you very much, Peter. I will, I will speak in Spanish. Um, Buenos días a todas y todos, buenas tardes y buenas noches. Good morning, afternoon and evening. There are lots of different learnings on uh, IPES in Mexico, and I will just highlight a few of those main points. Uh, there was a question on the author uh, in copyright and the importance of uh, those rights. Those are fully recognized. We have seen that the whole free private informed consent took place in the different processes of IPES. So just to ensure that it is a knowledge that is belongs to the authors that share their knowledge. So I will be now referring to the assessments and workshops. We have seen a culturally adapted sessions. We start with an opening ceremony and respect of the different knowledges that is going to be shared. The importance of uh, including the different inputs from communities throughout this very extensive review process, peer review process is very important. I think it is important for humankind and it's a very good example for other research um, investigations and assessment that the respect that they show, you know, what part of that knowledge that can be shared or not, just by looking at vulnerability of that specific knowledge. The most important part is to understand the importance, the respect that the traditional knowledge should have. And to know exactly the content of the process also enhances knowledge as such to improve at the different level, at the different advocacy level internationally, nationally, and locally. And very specific concrete actions to enhance the participation of indigenous people and local communities within the EPS process. We would like to invite you all to be part of this process, but first of all, to expand the call for participation. 
of course, the call has to come together with a, a different workshops on the IPAs, the processes. It is important for us in order to create more participation to uh, spread the word on how it works. We have also a guide on assessments. Once uh, we use a specific terminology on a research and methodology, gray um, data, and, and all this different terminology that is important also to widespread in order to understand the whole process, we could probably contribute better if we are aware of those specific tools and methodologies and wording, the importance of inclusion, inclusion not only of knowledge, but also rights, rights to land, territories, the prior informed consent for all the different indigenous people and local communities. Into uh, a call to all national platforms to include more indigenous peoples and local communities participants into their local reviews or participation or uh, uh, different events. And, and to use those assessments, the idea is not just to have a repository or a, to be put in a, a library. The idea is that those are to be used for the citizens, for the peoples, for all of us, and to review the content on those dialogues, the content of the information that was shared so that we can talk, all of us indigenous and local community members and uh, experts or scientists just to have that exchange to enhance the key messages and uh, widespread those in order to uh, convince uh, the societies on the role, the important role of the uh, IPLCs. We IPLCs have the experience and that have been tested, we have the evidence. And we need uh, to ask for the respect and the consent in order to move on and improve and, and help with our part of the contribution. This is a document that I will share with you on this reflection and ideas. Have a good day, thank you. Thank you so much, Yesenia, for those uh, important reflections. So we're now uh, very pressed for time, so we're going to keep moving. I ask the panelists to really uh, keep their interventions uh, as short as possible. Uh, apologies for that. It's always the way. Uh, Lucy, please. Uh, Lucy is from Kenya, and she is uh, with Ramiro. She is also the co-chair of the IIFB, working with the Convention on Biological Diversity. Lucy, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Peter, and uh, hello, everyone. And uh, really want to appreciate the fact that uh, already quite our colleagues have already spoken, so I'll be as brief as possible. And especially that uh, uh, Georgie has explained about the centers of excellence, centers of distinction, because we are part of the process. And uh, just want to say that this particular process, and especially the assessment on indigenous knowledge, is very, very important. and. Uh, by us, a team from IFB starting to have the, the centers of extinction is really very important because now it, we take the information down to the local level. We are able to be able to uh, take the knowledge that we have already with the assessment, uh, scientific assessment, and we go down to the ground and be able to talk with the different communities on that. We are very happy here in Kenya that we are already working with some of the communities who are pastoralists. I think Karanja already uh, talked about uh, having uh, the best net uh, activities in 2019, which we also partly participated. And we are very glad that the indigenous peoples and local communities were also involved. 
and he, we work with pastoralist communities and especially for these uh, uh, centers of uh, distinction we are working in uh, transmara uh, of kenya and we are also working in uh, samburu and west pokot and we have some three centers there which we are focusing on who have got uh, very important knowledge uh, indigenous knowledge that they have and looking at science and the knowledge they have we thought that this was very good to build on and also to be able to bring issues of fpic by developing uh, bicultural protocols so that the communities may also be able to understand because for a long time uh, uh, it, people felt like maybe the traditional knowledge that we have is not important Important. But when we started working and when we have all these uh, uh, processes in different processes on climate change, on uh, on biodiversity, and also this other side of uh, uh, desertification, we find out slowly by slowly as we continue working, indigenous communities are understanding, they are recognizing their knowledge, and they are also trying as much as possible to understand and to share the knowledge, and also to have that intergenerational uh, aspect of making sure that people do understand within the community. Not, li not only them as elders, but as uh, women also, and, uh, yeah, and youth. So it's kind of collective. So uh, really, it's a, a process which we want to continue. And as uh, we are, they are also at the same time contributing to the different processes on climate change and the post 2020 global biodiversity forum. So we are very, very, very happy that we are uh, able to contribute this at this time and will continue doing that. Thank you, Peter. I will just take this short time and then we can be able to network with the rest in terms of looking much more, especially on the assessment that ICBES is doing, which is very, very important for us. And the fact that at least the FPIC is being used here to allow the indigenous communities to be able to present their work in different ways. They really don't have to be all written, but also oral, as others have said, and as art artifacts and knowledge that they have, they can share it in different ways. Thank you very much and good luck to everyone and best wishes. Thank you so much, Lucy, and it's great to have the support and collaboration with the IIFB. Uh, Sherry Pictou, please. Uh, Sherry's yes. from Canada. She's a member of the IPBES ILK Task Force, and she's based in Dalhousie University. Sherry. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I'll try to be as brief as possible, so I'll probably read from my notes because I know we're uh, crammed for time. I do want to um, thank Kamal for that wonderful opening. Uh, those openings are, are very um, special to me and very important. Um, what we try to emphasize in the, in the deliberations that I've participated in on both the uh, dialogue sessions and the task force is how Indigenous peoples around the world live in and with many different land and water ecosystems, it's very important to include the water. And these, this is indicative of many kinds of relationships that Indigenous peoples and local communities hold with biodiversity. However, a common element that underlie our relationships with biodiversity is lived experience. Uh, and it's a lived experience that is multi-dynamic and can involve learning to access food, water, medicine, and other resources, which is enacted through the transmission of song, storytelling, ceremonies, ancestral relations, and so forth. And fundamental to these knowledge systems is the basic fact of how our dependence on ecosystems can only be sustained by ensuring their integrity and health. In other words, our health depends upon the health of the ecosystems on which we depend. Um, therefore, it is essential for biodiversity assessments to not just extract and, ex and include Indigenous knowledge, but to collaborate with Indigenous peoples in the co-production of knowledge and the assessment itself with proper acknowledgement. And I know that IPIS is working towards this. This requires enacting a truly multidisciplinary, if not interdisciplinary approach, which aligns well with Indigenous research methodologies like the concept of relationality, the relationality between humans and between humans and the, na the, the natural worlds. Many assessments of ecosystems historically uh, did not consider uh, this relational approach for truly understanding relationships between human and non-human worlds, which is fundamental to our existence. I also just want to note, I returned uh, from last week's sessions of uh, the United Nations Permanent Forum and uh, had the opportunity to meet Vivian. I wish we had a, a, a translator and it was just really uh, uh, such an honor to meet you, uh, Vivian. And in my conversations there, 
Um, Ipis is, uh, came out as being really well known for their long uh, history of trying to, well, towards efforts of working with Indigenous people, Indigenous and local people. And this brings me to my second point, which has already been raised, is free prior and informed consent. In the task force, uh, they enact free prior and informed consent principles in our dialogues and other deliberations, which in my view can be applied to research and engages with, in, particularly engaged in Indigenous people and um, local communities. And as we've learned from past events, even this past year, that our deliberations must begin with ceremony, some form of opening or ceremony. And that Indigenous knowledge can inform assessments and decision-making processes that hopefully will inform conservation practices as well as economic practices in a way that ensures that the integrity of the ecosystems is, um, is upheld and, and, and upheld in a way that is that does not include Indigenous people, but work in, and build in relations with them. And here in Canada, I just want to briefly mention, we have the Indigenous Protected, conserved, and co conserved in areas initiative. I'm hoping that translates to being truly indigenous led. And I know that the Department of Fisheries and Oceans is looking to that model for marine protected areas. And I'm also involved with a project with Aramat that connects the well being of indigenous people with biodiversity. And my only hope, my only personal hope, is that the international community will start capitalize in the I in Indigenous peoples. Walalio, thank you. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you so much, Sherry, and for all of your the work that you do for IPES and uh, the networks. We really appreciate it. We're now very, very, very tight for time. We have three minutes left of our scheduled time. We can overrun a little way. The final slide we were going to put on was just to reiterate the different ways that you can get in contact with us and to encourage you to do that. So I'll put the, uh, the text of that slide in the chat so you can see it, and then we'll continue with the panel. And I ask the panelists to really be as brief as possible, and apologies for that. Uh, so next, uh, Kamal Kumarai, who we've already, uh, we've already met. So Kamal, uh, you have the floor, please. Uh, thank you very much, Peter, and thank you very much, uh, Sherry Picto, uh, for my indigeneity. Uh, so uh, the ILK is the system, so it is the science uh, of the indigenous peoples and local community. That's we are working, and we hope uh, this the I, uh, ILK task force, the EBS assessment, will give uh, the um, uh, the more information can use, can uh, help uh, the um, uh, information to the dialogue with the science and policy. Uh, and uh, for, uh, for a certain time, I'm working in Nepal and with this, the IA best focal point. And recently I have a dialogue with the UNESCO uh, in Nepal for further collaboration work in these matters. Uh, in short time, I thank you, Peter and Selimasa. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Kamal, for those words and uh, for the brief intervention. We really appreciate it. And it's the work you're doing in Nepal sounds really interesting. So we'd be interested to hear more. Uh, Maria Elena, please. Maria Elena is from the Philippines and she works for the Centers of Distinction on Indigenous and Local Knowledge. Maria Elena. Greetings from the Philippines. Um, my sharing is um, an experience of working with IPES. Uh, it is a response to an IPBES IPLC dialogue workshop on invasive and alien species. So this response uh, from the IPLC side was that the COD ILK decided to organize a webinar on perspectives and experiences on invasive alien species. And uh, this happened on December 18, 2020. Uh, the webinar consolidated the perspectives of IPLCs about invasive alien species in general, including their strategies to manage, control, or eradicate these invasive alien species. So the webinar covered three thematic discussions. So one was 
uh, multiple concepts on new plants and animals. So from one uh, IPLC perspective, invasive alien species are uh, considered as new plants and animals in their territories, okay? The second is uh, the theme of indigenous concepts of new plants and animals in their territory. So uh, the second theme is the perspectives of IPLC. And the third are the experiences of IPLCs uh, and their categorization of uh, plants and animals and in the context of their worldviews. So um, we learned that indeed there is a different conceptualization of indigenous peoples in relation to invasive alien species. And because of that, it has stimulated discussions and even collaboration within the um, members, within some members of the centers of distinction. And um, it opened opportunities for collaboration to generate actions and strengthen demands for integrated invasive air, alien species management and interventions, including the serious engagement of government to address the harmful effects of invasive alien species in IPLC lands and territories. Um, this, the uh, proceedings of this workshop is available in the website of the CODILK. It's going to be, to be uploaded there. Uh, the website, we will put it on the chat box. Uh, this is my very brief um, sharing on the experience that we have with uh, IPBES on IPLC dialogues, particularly on invasive alien species. Thank you and uh, have a good day, everyone. Many thanks, Maria Elena. And uh, finally, last but not least, we will go to Prasit. Uh, Prasit is from Thailand and he works for the PASD. Uh, which is a community-based organization there, and he's a long-term participant in IPBES processes and member of the Center of Distinction. So, uh, Prasit, uh, we welcome you for a brief intervention as we're a little bit over time now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Uh, let me make a very brief in the aspect of indigenous knowledge practice as dynamic knowledge and innovation. I just pick up uh, one example practically in the area we have worked, uh, the way how to create a racial biodiversity that uh, they have a different uh, ways or different method. But we use one thing by use a B as a pollination to increase the biodiversity. Uh, uh, the people have uh, than the beekeeping, both in the forest and you know, agriculture, especially in the, the traditional uh, agriculture as the uh, rotational farming and the fallow land, this area becomes space for pollination. And the outcome, uh, the result, after have done for five years, the rich of biodiversity in the ecosystem that are very rich. And in the same time, the income for the farmers for honey, and at the same time, farmers or IPSC have good take, uh, take care of their ecology because they need to aware of the, how to control the fire, con so all kinds of that we destroy the bee box that they have done the beekeeping. Uh, another issue I'd like to bear briefly about the committee social enterprise that uh, that come from both uh, agriculture products and non timber forest product. These kinds of products is locally it's not known by outside, but uh, we. we try to create uh, add value to do the packing and to branding and also uh, 
uh, create a story about uh, this thing and start uh, uh, inform or communicate with the people outside, the customer, the consumers, and create a part of uh, knowledge, uh, give to them. And after that, this kind of start becoming the connection between the, uh, the areas and the outside that the consumer for outside increasing and start knowing more about the trade, local food, local seeds, and at the same time, it's created the, uh, the proud of uh, local people on this species and it, on their cultural identity. Lastly, for the recognition of the practice of LK, uh, we used uh, the declaration of special cultural zone that uh, normally come for the Lupa or traditional practice or to offering the forest. But after that, uh, it's uh, innovated into the declaration of special cultural zone. That uh, means that the, the governments and also the public also aware of the way how to manage the resources. And at the same time, the practice or traditional way of managing resources in a different way. This become the uh, recognition of uh, local land and territory. And also support by the laws, we call the cabinet resolution and support these activities. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prasad, for, for that information. And I know your community is doing some really interesting work that really uh, really provides some great examples of how communities can adapt to marketing products while still maintaining their values and sustainable systems. So thank you so much. Great. So uh, we've run a little bit over time, but I hope everybody has found this to be an interesting session. Uh, we just want to say a really big thank you to everybody uh, for taking part. Thank you to all of our speakers, to all of our panelists, and also to all of the participants. If you feel that any of your comments or questions weren't properly addressed during the session, please do write to us and we'll aim to do that uh, by email afterwards. And please do also contact us if you want to uh, work with us further in the future, especially if you're part of indigenous organizations and also local community organizations, because we really want to increase our outreach with local communities as well. So. Uh, that's uh, just uh, another big thank you to everybody who's been involved and wishing you all a very good uh, morning, afternoon or evening, depending on where you are. Thank you so much. Goodbye. <laughs>